messing up everything. The Covenless Witch. It's been Agatha all along. <laughs> I've always wanted to tell somebody they're a witch. You're a witch. <laughs> Thank you. You know what? That's a huge compliment. I figured it would be. Mm -hmm. No, no. You've embraced it so beautifully. <laughs> um, Love a witch. So now that you've spent some time being a witch, being around witches, you were in the series a witch fanboy. Mm -hmm. What is the number one rule? to the being the best witch? Is it the spells? What's the number one rule? Ooh. Mm. I think, well, this witch is a little different than a lot of witches. Yes. But I think it's, uh, it's intuition. And there's like a, a sense, and like that intuition connects you to your power. You, you see things. You just did a character thing too, you know, because she touches her. Yeah. I love that, no, don't stop. I can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you think? I think it's different for each witch. Yes. I think that's, oh. this is literally what our characters learn in the series. What the rule, like how to be a good witch, what, what, what the... Mm -hmm. So what are the do's and don'ts of being in a coven? Work together. Yeah. You seemed like your character was really not thrilled about that. No, no. nor was Catherine. <laughs> 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 I'm not an ensemble actor. No. <laughs> Yeah, working together, I think, is a, trusting your sisters in the craft. Mm. You got to think for the cover, not for yourself. Yep. Yeah. yeah. What is Agatha? I mean, she wants to go down the witch's road, and apparently, if she makes it down the witch's road, she she gets something she's missing. What is like her ultimate goal? I think l let's talk about the, her ultimate goal for this show is yeah. to get her powers back. Yes. And all she knows is that will be at the end of the witch's road if you complete it. Yeah. It will, it will solve all of her problems. She'll get her power back. If she accessed her full power, where does she stand in the MCU in terms of power? Because every character always mm -hmm. thinks that they have the most amount of power. Of course. I would say very powerful. But I don't know if that's me. I want to go toe-to-toe to toe with Doc, Dr. Strange. Yeah. Dr. Strange? I thought you were going to say Dr. Reason. Doom. Oh, yes, but we haven't really met him yet. No. but I, I'll, I'll see. I feel like if anybody could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Doctor Doom, not having seen any of it, yeah. it would be Agatha. Yeah, I just, would love it. Also could just like cuss him out and just make him cry. That would yeah, be it. make fun of his outfit. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I love that. That is a cool one. So you said within the show, you know, she's trying to access her power. What about beyond the show? Because obviously she's part of the bigger MCU. Beyond the show, what do you think she's trying to trying to do? I think that... It's all about power, mm. she thinks. Yeah. The accumulation, the more, 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 like she'll just never be satisfied. And that is, can be a lifelong search. Because as soon as you get something, you just see another thing on the horizon. So I think that that's like her drive. And I think it keeps her from looking at, you know, stuff. And then for your character, she calls you her pet yeah. at one point in the series. And he's still along for the ride. I mean, he's a fanboy, but he's got to have another motive. Well, we'll see. Mm. We'll They've see. trained you well. They've trained, you know, you're new to the MCU, but that was very good. Yeah, yeah. Yes. we'll see. So you know, good. Teen has a mystery to him. And it's, yeah. as the show goes on, we, we solve that more and more. Do we see by like by the end of this year, because this is an anthology series, but obviously, there's speculation about who he might be mm -hmm. and, and the larger picture in the MCU. This is your second series. Like, it's amazing. But just, I, Can you believe it? I know. Like, <laughs> how does it sort of feel like joining this, like, and then the potential of having this character yeah. go on I to mean, other... If it was up to me, obviously, he'd be in everything. So people keep asking me, like, oh, would you come back? I'm like, obviously. Like, yes. That's a yes. stupid question. Of course I would. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's been great to join the MCU. I'm... I'm it's very exciting. Yeah. I mean, I know you know this, but Agatha, in the original comic series, it's amazing because she never had her own comic. But I know. And now here you are because of the popularity of the character and the way you've played her. But oh, in the Jack. very beginning, she was an ally of the Fantastic Four. Yes, a nanny. Could you imagine, now that you've seen the casting and knowing that movie is coming, could you imagine being an, either an ally or a foe? Flipping it with those with those characters. Oh, I can imagine anything. <laughs> That's the power of being an actor. Yeah. <laughs> but I I think that 
Um, yeah, that was really fun to know that that was when I read that for the first time, mm. that she was also a nanny. She pops up everywhere. She really does. A lot of places. Yeah. It's almost random places. Do you think that's better almost than having like her own comic? The fact that she can sort of pop up in these different places and then people are always speculating within the MCU now, yeah. like, where is she gonna pop up? Yeah. Like Joe said, it just it would be it's always especially with these kind of characters, it's like the best. So yes. yeah. I, I would love to go toe to toe with these actors are so brilliant. Aren't they? Isn't yeah. that casting incredible? Yeah. My favorite line of last season in WandaVision, I killed Sparky. Yes. This time, blast me, you bitches. <laughs> do you have a personal favorite? <laughs> oh my god, I do love blast me, you bitches. bitches. is a great one. <laughs> oh, I mean, there are so many from this. There are. There's some great ones. I mean, I think the thing, the one that like sticks out to me from WandaVision is like, there always be pitchforks and torches for ladies like us, Wanda, mm -hmm. which I love. I still like think that's such a freaking yeah. good line. I love um, Deborah Joe's. This is something like which people. This is the worst part I've ever been to, or something after the handbag. Oh yeah. I just think it's so funny. Oh, yours for me was it's giving middle age something. It's oh, giving... second chance at love vibes. Yeah, I could <laughs> never get that line in oh, the really? American accent. I had to ADR it. But so how many good times. was his American accent, too? Unbelievable. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Can't wait to see more of you. Well, the gang's all here. Let's hit the road. You're all so much fun to watch in the series. Um, now that you are experts on witchcraft <laughs> and witches, what is each of your number one rule about being in a coven? You have to be committed to the coven. Okay. There has to be some sort of camaraderie. Mm -hmm. You okay. have to be generous. Mm -hmm. And you have to learn the song. <laughs> <laughs> you just did that as if it was a song, as if you just <laughs> rehearsed that. <laughs> um, I thought, I really thought you were going to say, like, the evil side of it, but you're really going, you're leading oh, it's into all the pro. Bonding. It's all pro coven, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. and if you can just sort of go over, because each of you sort of represents a, like a different part of witchcraft, if you can just talk about what each of you represents with your characters. Yeah, um, I am a potions witch, and Jennifer Kale kind of uses the environment around her to create magic, and I think it's really cool, because you can really see in your own life that there's, this, there's magic everywhere, and there, you can use any kind of element to create your destiny. And I, I'm a blood witch, meaning I've been, I'm actually descended from a witch, but my skill is protection. And I'm a trainee. <laughs> <laughs> She's our intern, yeah. And you yeah. also always have the punchline, yeah, right? I, I loved your line about Talbots. Yeah. That was so such So many goals. people have mentioned that. That's a good line. Because we all have moms that oh, shop yeah. at Talbots. My sister loves Talbots because yeah. yeah. they have petites. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is actually a plug for Talbots. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm wondering for each of you, obviously, this is a show about witches, but what are your, some, some of your favorite witches in pop culture across the board? It doesn't have to be Disney necessarily. Mm. I couldn't believe when I was kind of researching it how many there actually are. <laughs> so many. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Us, yeah. What is your favorite? What's the list? What's, it, what's sort of like when... Sabrina. Yeah, yeah. The teenage Lesson Witch. Man. We have the Wicked Witch of the West, Samantha from Bewitched, the Sanderson mm -hmm. Sisters. This is Disney. From, uh, the Hocus Pocus. Mm -hmm. But who are yours? Who are I your like favorite? those Wicked Witches. I do like yes. them. I like those witches. I like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. I like Marie, Marie Laveau as a witch in history, but also Angela Bass's portrayal in mm -hmm. American Horror Story. Great. I mean, yeah. Agatha is kind of like the witch of all time. True. Yeah. yeah. And I grew up near Salem, Massachusetts. Did you really? Yes. Oh. So I know Salem really well. And I was fascinated. Yeah. I mean, just fascinated. I don't know if I believe any of it, but, but it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. Did you get into it growing up around there? Or is it kind no, of thing like you grew I, up around there you know, and then you don't want, you're not into it? I was into the it. history of it. Um, you know, so I did the Crucible, you of know, course. play. Of course, yeah. And uh, so that made me extremely nervous about believing any of it, you know, because mm -hmm. I, yeah. it was, that was scary. And that, um, I, I also, I don't like horror movies. I don't like, I, I'm just not attracted to that. I like other things better. But I do like graveyards. I really do. <laughs> I like to read Amazing. gravestones. I know. So weird. I'm so weird. And um, so the Salem, you know, the graveyards are yeah. unbelievable. Sure. They're, they're pretty amazing. Ooh. Yeah. Do you yeah. go to graveyards? I do go to graveyards. Wow, but you don't like horror. 
No, I'm not. I don't go for. I mean, I'm. Yeah. I'm like. She just if, goes I'm there like go to a her movie, lunch. I'm not going to go. Just have a meditation moment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like a meditation. Like a I can't do either. But no, I'm just weird. But I do like graveyards. What was the moment like for you all singing live at T23? It was very cool. Yeah. Nerve wracking. Yes. Yeah, I don't think any of us anticipated a stadium. <laughs> I don't know yeah. if we knew that it was going to be truly to thousands of people. But it's so exhilarating. You're getting so much energy. And I mean, honestly, when the crowd roared, it actually surprised me. I don't think I'd ever been on the receiving end. And yeah. you're just, it, it was surprised. It just, I, it kind of shook me for a second. You yeah. Know? And you feel really tiny. Like, yeah. You really? You feel really small. And I was, I wasn't worried about the seeing the song because, you know, you could just maybe stand closer to somebody and they'll <laughs> sing it for you. But I was worried about tripping mm -hmm. on the on the cloak mm -hmm. thing, you know. That was what, and the smoke. I would think that you would feel larger than life, not smaller. No, I, was, I felt small because the audience is up there too. Mm -hmm. It's, it's you you feel looked down on, but not in a, not in a bad way, but just, way, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. can, yeah. Can you compare that to singing within the, sh the series? Because the series has such a big element. All of you singing together with Pat. And yeah. Catherine. Honestly, the, singing the song together is so special, and I think even if it's on set or in, on a stadium, I feel so connected to everyone while we're singing, and it kind of doesn't matter where we are. Yeah, because the harmony really requires you to listen to each other, mm -hmm. and it's not actually an easy song to sing. Yeah. And so you can't you can't be on their on your own just kind of doing it. You have to really have an ear out for everyone else. I love the song. I mean, it just. It, 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 I, but I only had to do the chorus, thank God, for everyone. Um, it was, you know, I get to just join in in the chorus and I got to have fun. I mean, you know, my character has fun and she's so proud of herself that she picked up the chorus in a very short period of time. What was your reaction? Because coming from WandaVision, your character has a much different arc in yeah. this series. So yeah. if you can kind of compare, like going from that where she's a certain way almost for throughout the the season. I got to use my imagination this time more, you know? I I wasn't so like in one division I was in the 50s and it was rules on women, rules, you know. And this one it was freer. You know, it was just freer and I I got to do more I, I felt like I could make her a little more alive in the real world, you know? Yeah. Um, let's talk about mother mothering and Katherine Hahn being the head witch or mother witch. Your experience with her, she's just so powerful and incredible in this role. Yeah, Katherine really set the tone for this show. She really dove into this character and created something really special. Yeah. And I think it just bled into the rest of the show and like really made us feel like we were doing something that was really different. Yeah. yeah, invited all of us to just level up and dig in deep as well. Mm -hmm. She was real committed. Mm -hmm. So when you saw that, you couldn't be less committed, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Were, were any of those lines, like the tablets, were any of those lines improvised? Because I feel like there were so many great one-liners. Like, you don't expect this. This series feel like feels like more than one genre. Yeah, yeah like it is. There's true yeah. comedy to it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's there some ad lib. Yeah, there were some ad libs. I mean, not not, not a, a lot, lot though. Not a yeah, ton. Really, a lot no, of Jack. She's yeah, a good she's writer. A writer. Yeah. What yeah. Were each of your my last question. What was each of your favorite one liner of your own? I mean, I guess it's not my line, but a line that I really enjoyed is whenever there, there's a part. <laughs> there's a part where the, Pat, uh, Patty, as Lilia said, "Quick, get into the torture device," <laughs> <laughs> and it just. It I just have, yeah. made me laugh every time. And it's not supposed to be funny, but I, I was just like, that's yeah. so wild. Patty, I have a favorite Patty line. This one she ad-libbed. It, um, it was when she meets Rio, Aubrey's character. And it's in the trailer, but she ad-libbed, what a scary bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, so funny. I'm going to walk the witch's road. The road is a death wish. So congratulations on this series. Thank My you. first question for you is when I'm watching the series, I'm obviously seeing Wizard of Oz and I'm seeing like even with the contortionist, I would love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. Even if they're obscure films or a series, your inspos. 
Oh my gosh. Wait, so my personal ones are for this actual series. They're Both, kind of one actually. The well, yeah, I mean, for this, from this series, uh, you were saying the contortion. Yeah, it's Exorcist, it's Poltergeist, um, Suspiria, it's Season of the Witch, and then it's The Craft, and it's Charmed, and it's Buffy, um, and it's Sleeping Beauty, and it's Snow White, and um, it's like anywhere you find an iconic witch, that's, we were like sniffing that out in the development of the show. Um, and then for me personally, I, you know, I, I loved fantasy as a child. Um, so I was all about Never Ending Story and Labyrinth and Dark Crystal and um, Princess Bride and and Goonies. And so that sort of, and like all of those, all of that is like practical. That's all like puppets and real sets. And so, yeah, throw that all in the cauldron, stir it up, and you get Agatha. Like what you did there. Very much like what you did there. <laughs> um, so speaking of the cauldron, this is going to air during Halloween season. Yeah. So why do you think this is? I mean, it's kind of a duh. Uh -huh. uh, but why do you think this is the perfect series for that whole season, the season of the witch? Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, the, the, the obvious is like Halloween witches. And they even, like the characters talk about that in the show. Like it, you, it's unavoidable. It's inescapable. Um, but I also think that... Like, I love fall, um, and a lot of the people that are you know, that are really close to me have October birthdays. So October is like a very sacred month for me. And 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 I love this sort of like you kind of it's getting chilly and you're kind of like getting undercover. And I and like there's there's like an obscuring that happens with leaves and shadow and the days are shorter. And you know, this is a show that's about lies and trickery and masks. And so it doesn't it doesn't feel appropriate to release a show like this like in the blinding beautiful sunlight of summer. You got to you got to have a little shadow for this show. I know there's been a lot of horror released in August. I'm not understanding it. <laughs> um so if you can talk about the fact that you brought on and this was also in WandaVision composers that also did Frozen. Um if you can talk about the composers that you brought in and why why did you decide that music was so integral to this particular series? Well, so so um, the Lopez's came up for WandaVision because we had this I idea for the opening titles. And we, like, that was really an early idea. For WandaVision, the, each writer, I, I assigned them their opening titles and they had to write it. And then when they came in with their episode, they had to sing it, which was like, maybe the best decision I've ever made. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. goodness. Um, so they, so like there were these early versions and then of course the Lopez's came on and like used their Lopez like sorcery and made them incredible and memorable and perfect. And that, that experience of working with the Lopez's was, you know, life changing. They are, they are extraordinary. And so in going into the Agatha show, because Agatha's song was such a hit, it was obvious we needed a song or songs for this show, but I also just was like, I am working with the Lopez's again. Like that's my, that's my personal prere prerequisite for this um, experience. Um, but then it just it it really took on a life of its own, and the song, the, the song and the and the the story structure just merged into one. With and then seeing them show. sing live, what was that like? I, I mean, I, I don't know. It was an out of body experience. <laughs> I left my body. I circled around the Honda Center, <laughs> dropped back in, um, and then walked like a human out of the um, the place, which I'm proud of myself for being able to do. It was incredible, like full body chills. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and like being in the rehearsal space was also just, you know. And Catherine is like. She's such a witch, you know? She's just like teeth and nails and grit, and she's incredible. Mary told me a little bit about, because I did ask her, I mean, obviously with the character of Teen, we think we know who he might be. Um, she said, yes, there is a larger connection within the MCU. I was wondering for you, like obviously you're casting him with that sort of in mind. So that's a big responsibility. With great power comes great responsibility. Yes. So um, did you have that in mind when you were casting him? And, and, and do you see that he's going to have a larger picture in the MCU? I mean, I just like generally Joe has such an incredible future because he's such yeah. a wonderful person and he's so talented. Um, you know, uh, doing casting for Marvel and working with Sarah Finn, who, I mean, I mean, the choices that she has made, the, the casting decisions that she has been responsible for across like Marvel's tenure, it's amazing, like these these incredibly talented people that she was like this person for this role, and now it, like exists. They're all icons. So cast, casting Catherine was like that. It was like we are you know choosing someone for this role. We don't know where it's going to go, but like any any role in any Marvel project has the potential to have legs. So so you always feel that sort of. Um, 
responsibility. Yeah. But but I like I'm just like I listen to what Sarah Finn tells me. I mean I knew I knew Joe was the one, but also Sarah Finn was like the one. And I'm like, you got it, girl. And do you see him having a interconnectivity with the rest of the universe? I mean, I I I, I try very hard not to speak on behalf of other properties, yeah. you know, that I'm that I'm in, involved in. And so what I just say is like as a fan, it's my hope. He's just tremendous and yeah. Let's I know there's so. also a theory that Aubrey, there's a connection to her Legion character. <laughs> Have you heard this? Um, I also, the, uh, this is what I do to that kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk about the Witch's Road because there was some definite Wizard of Oz, Yellow Brick Road influences. Yeah. And I understand it was all practical, mm. which is incredible. Mm. What was the vision for that? For that when you when you started out, like it's just yeah. Well, I mean, so the the vision is is like a smorgasbord of influences. Um, I think, you know, the the Wizard of Oz was a, was a helpful one because, you know, we knew the show would be a quest. So we were talking a lot of quest stories like, like Goonies, like Labyrinth. Um, but, you know, but Wizard of Oz is the one that involves witches. Um, and it, it is, you know, with the book, it is an older one. So it feels... Um, it has that sort of like gravitas and age to it. Um, and, and it was just like, it was, it, that kind of thing is sort of like helpful as you, as you shape something and then the illusions become kind of natural. Um, but it is like, it, it, you know, once you see the fullness of the show, like it's, it's one aspect, like it's the Wizard of Oz on acid. So first of all, I have to say that this is the first time I've ever interviewed anybody where I actually wasn't sure the title of the series. <laughs> so can you run me through sort of like from the beginning to now, how many titles you've had and why? Oh my gosh, I've actually lost count. <laughs> Because that's also because we brainstormed so many in the writers' room. Maybe one of the best days that we had. It was a total blast. But uh, this gag was completely the brainchild of Jack Schaefer and felt totally on theme for us because Agatha is a con artist and a liar. So we really enjoyed faking the fans out. Um, and as they became more and more ridiculous, it was fun to reveal exactly what we were doing. But it was Agatha all along. All along, it was Agatha all along. Correct. So it was always going to end there with the wink. <laughs> um, so what was the most ridiculous, do you think? Well, the most ridiculous by design was the Lion Witch with Great Wardrobe. Uh, something that she is and very much uh, uh, what she embodies. She's uh, icon in her own right, but it was really fun with that title to let people in finally on the joke. Speaking of the wardrobe, was the gold pants, was that her Princess Leia moment? The princess, the, the gold flares, I'm like, I hope she took those home with her because they looked really good on her. <laughs> um, uh, I think that is our, uh, uh, our sort of like rock ballad uh, uh, trial. Yeah, the costumes are incredible and shout out to Daniel yeah. Salon, our costume designer. There are so many incredible looks. Um, oh my gosh. On the show, and there are a lot of secrets hidden within the clothing. So really? I, will, I will tease that. Secrets in terms of like the end of the season or ties to the MCU or sort of all of it? Just about their characters, their backstory, okay. wow. maybe a little bit of what you said. And uh, it's really something to behold. The craftsmanship and, and the costumes are incredible. That's, I love that. Okay, so when I was watching, I got the first four episodes. Really great, such a beautiful visual world. And so I'm seeing a little bit of Goonies. I'm seeing Wizard of Oz, maybe Yellow Brick Road and The mm -hmm. Witch's Road. So can you give me a list of your personal inspirations? And I feel like there might even be some random ones in there that aren't even necessarily <laughs> horror themed, but sort of your personal inspirations in terms of uh, creating the series. For sure. Well, you know, like with WandaVision, we hearken back to the golden age of television and sitcom throughout the eras and we very much wanted to celebrate um, horror and fantasy um, and the golden age of those genres um, and the decades that we've been taken through with those. Um, I'm a big fan of horror myself and so we're a ton of our writers in the writer's room. Um, so throughout the series you'll see a little bit of Suspiria, a little bit of Saw even. There's really something for everyone but um, a big inspiration I found was The Wizard of Oz. Um, yeah. And our narrative um, has elements of that too. You know, our, our witches are embarking on the journey of the witch's road to find something that each of them are missing. Um, um, but what was so striking when I went back and watched The Wizard of Oz was just how wonderful it stands up and how beautiful mm -hmm. it is. Um, and so we utilized incredible filmmaking technique with this show and we use 
backdrops and miniatures and special makeup effects to create an entirely practical environment. There's not one bit of green screen or blue screen on the Witch's Road. Everything that you see is completely in camera, um, including that little beach house that you see in the trailer the, that was a miniature. Um, and it just created an incredible environment for our actors to feel grounded in the space. I think when they first walked onto the Witch's Road, there were tears. <laughs> really? Wow, that does not surprise me at all. It is, it is a stunning world. Um, so you utilized f composers from Frozen in the music for this. So Kristen Anderson Lopez and Robert Lopez, why is the why was it important to have them work on it? I mean, they're iconic within, you know, Disney mm -hmm. and Marvel. Mm -hmm. Sort of talk about that relationship and utilizing and why was the music so important in this series? Mm -hmm. Working again with our incredible songwriters, Bobby Lopez and Kristen Anderson Lopez was I mean, that was on the top of our list when we um, embarked on the, the writing and creation of this show. They brought WandaVision to a whole new level, and so we very much wanted to find an, a way to work with them. Um, they're geniuses, and we just wanted more. Um, so the, the role that The Ballad of the Witches Road took over the course of the development just grew and grew and grew and took on a ton of um, importance and just compounds over the course of the show and there's so many easter eggs within the lyrics and I'm excited for fans to uh, learn more about the role that the ballad plays. Yeah, because I feel like even with Aubrey's character there's so many potential ties to other MCU projects, series, films. Are you very mindful of that as you were making this series? Um, are there larger ties to the um, other projects? that you can talk about. Well, what's great about the show is that it's all about Agatha and we introduce an entirely new coven of witches. So if you haven't seen any Marvel property before, you can drop in and get to know yeah. these characters and fall in love with them. Um, if you're a huge fan of WandaVision, this certainly pays off um, a lot and takes us to new heights. Um, Aubrey's character is mysterious indeed, as is our mysterious teen, and exactly uh, who they are and the roles that they play develop over the course of the show. Wow, I love hearing that, because I saw the first four episodes, and obviously at the very beginning, without spoilers, there's some ties to WandaVision, very clear ties to WandaVision. So moving forward, it is an anthology. I mean, this is an anthology show, so is it going to tie up in, in a neat bow by the end of it? Or how many, and how many, episode three was such a huge shocker, like how many more <laughs> jaw-dropping moments are there going to be, do you think? Um, there's something shocking, I think, at the end of each episode. Um, okay. To pick one out of many uh, I'm very excited for fans to check out episode five. Okay, I love that. Yeah. Um, and then down the witch's road, sort of that moment, and I know they performed, we, we are here mm -hmm. at D23, and you know everybody was there, Patti Lapone was there, Catherine Hahn performing last night. How did that come to be, that it was just like, how did Patti come to be in the series, and how did it come to be that you had all, just that is such a major part of this, of this series? You know, it was a daunting task casting this coven. The the Ballad of the Witches Road we knew would play a significant role um, over the course of the show, and we knew that our performers would have to rise to the occasion and perform it many different ways. Um, uh, so when we were casting the roles, of course, we're just looking for someone who can embody that character first and foremost. Um, but we were just so lucky, um, and it felt very serendipitous and witchy that um, each new actor that we cast just had enormous talent in the musical arena. Joe has the voice of a Disney prince. Incredible. Yes. Yeah. He just got off Broadway, Sweeney Todd. He's fabulous. Uh, Sashir Zameda, incredible voice. Alion, actually a classically trained pianist. Patti Lapone, national treasure. I mean, we could not be luckier. Um, and Aubrey Plaza rocks the drums at one point, I will say. Uh, and even Deborah Joe Rupp gets in on the fun. How do we pass this trial without any power? We survive. Like witches have been doing for centuries. Maiden, mother, <gasps> what happens next? <laughs>